yeah. very much for bringing that to us. Uh, I want to bring in uh, Republican Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody. Uh, first off, your reaction to this just heartbreaking story that Phil just brought us. This is a tragedy in the making, and stories like this are not uncommon all around the nation. Fentanyl has flooded into the country. I mean, Biden might as well have just given a key to the cartels. It's unbelievable the amounts flooding in. It's extraordinarily dangerous. We are dealing right now in one of the smallest counties uh, in our state, they're dealing in, with an emergency right now where fentanyl is, is running rampant. We've seen about nine deaths, an incredible amount of overdoses. Uh, the border and the lack of security and the lack of law enforcement there has made Americans less safe, certain, certainly Floridians. And that's why, as attorney general, the top cop here in the state, it's so wonderful to have a governor who's like, this is cannot be tolerated. Yeah. You cannot have a country or a state and and not enforce the law. So he's taking action, and, and it's it's just been a breath of fresh air. And I think to many around the nation who are just begging for leadership. Okay, so talk about what the Florida governor is doing to combat this crisis, because maybe what happens in Florida could be a test case for what could possibly happen across other uh, southern states. And, and to be clear here, the crisis at the border. It, you know, fentanyl is, is infiltrating all 50 states. I mean, this is a nationwide crisis. And, and the shocking thing is the president rarely even says the word. When they declared the National Fentanyl Awareness Day for the first time in May, Congress did that. President didn't even recognize it. He does not want to. He cannot because it is a failure of this administration. So you have great governors stepping up and trying to do the work that this administration should be doing, like Governor DeSantis, who has asked our Supreme Court to launch a grand jury investigation to these nan transnational criminal cartels. And and really importantly, who's working with them? Who's helping them facilitate all of this trafficking, whether it's drug trafficking or human trafficking or smuggling into our state? As you see, we have Floridians dying. We have our cops getting shot at from those that are here illegally. Our, our sheriffs are being told by this administration to release dangerous people back into the communities. And so, you know, enough is enough. Uh, this administration needs to do their job. If I hear Mallorca say one more time that he thinks they're doing a really good job while Americans are dying, yeah. I, I'm gonna, we're going to lose it here in Florida. So it's so great to have leaders like Governor DeSantis and other governors yeah. around the nation trying to step up. Yeah, you're, you're referencing the fact that Mayorkas has said repeatedly that they think that they're doing a good job at the border. They think that things are just fine. Meanwhile, those ranchers in particular are coming on to Fox Business, and we've been covering this at Fox News for, for the last couple of years in particular, that, that since, frankly, since President Trump left office, that the border has completely exploded because it's like he just, President Biden just basically said, open it up, everyone's welcome. Meanwhile, all those Border Patrol agents are getting stuck babysitting uh, these migrants and then the drug smugglers are over on the other side while they're distracted and they're bringing in the fentanyl. Again, though, what, what, what is the main thing that you think that Florida can do, what Governor DeSantis can do to at least temporarily at least push back on the drug smuggling that has infiltrated Florida in particular? Well, as you know, as attorney general here in Florida, we've been, been leading along with other states in the fight on pushing back on some of these uh, reckless policies that are, in fact, unlawful. You know, make no mistake, the president and Congress could stop this right now. They could draw down resources to that border and secure it. We'll keep speaking out on that. We'll keep taking the fight to court. But law enforcement agencies in our states are going to have to step up and do the job that Mayorkas and Biden and the DOJ will not, and that is to protect its citizens against these transnational criminal cartels and the criminals that are flooding into our states. Uh, real quick before we go, this is a midterm uh, election year. Uh, there's a lot of talk out there about a red wave for Washington uh, in November. How much of a piece of that red wave do you think can be attributed to the border crisis and the drug crisis that has taken over this country? That is a great question. If you look at the law enforcement leaders that are pleading for help, it crosses party lines. This is not Democrat or Republican. They're saying, pay attention to this. There are people dying. There is no security. We cannot protect our communities. This crosses party lines. So I think that you're going to see uh, 
th this administration be held accountable, the leaders in Congress be held accountable in November because of their lack of action, which they could take steps tomorrow to control this. And it is that is what should happen. They should be held accountable. Uh, and we're going to keep calling out this administration and the lack of safety and security for America as it continues to happen. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate you uh, joining us today to talk about, uh, again, it's such a serious, serious issue, what's happening in communities like yours, like ours. Thank you very much for being here.